Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri-Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of rangeland management. Good day, my name is Erastos Ngaruka. I'm the technical advisor for livestock and rangeland management in AgriBank. So uh, for the division known as Agri Advisory Services. So we are going to talk about grazing management and specifically the impact of grazing on your uh, uh, grass species. All right, when you put your animals in a camp, they don't just only start grazing anything, they also do select. But mind you, your rangeland productivity or your grazing productivity depends on the soil moisture or the rainfall and how you are using it, utilization. So when animals go in a camp or come into a new grazing area, they will always want to select the best grasses that they can eat easily, digest easily, or the grasses that, we, that can be perceived as more nutritious than the others. All right. For example, when the grazing is changing, the grazing conditions are changing, uh, whether deteriorating or even improving, they go in, in stages. So we have a stage that is known as the climax stage. So it has specific grass species that prefer such conditions. And then we have a uh, subclimax with specific grasses as well, prefer such conditions. And then the pioneer. So the pioneer are the ones that occupy degraded areas mostly. But then as your grazing is improving, it goes up to the climate stage, which now has almost all the best grasses that you can get. Now, if you look at grazing impact, selective grazing impact, uh, we have three different grass species here. So we have one of the climax grasses, uh, Sencresiliaris or blue buffalo. And then we have another one of the subclimax, uh, Stipagrosis uniplomis. And then we have another one of the uh, pioneer grasses like the Aristita meridionalis. Okay, so these three grass species uh, prefer different grazing conditions and the animals also select them uh, as the, uh, in order. So the order goes just from the best grass, which is Sencres liaris. You can see how it was grazed almost to the ground and which is also dangerous when you overgraze, when you are talking of overgrazing, when you focus on one grass species, it may be disappearing from your grazing area. And again, if you just graze it too low like that, you are uh, exposing it to trembling, to heat and so forth. So it's like you are exposing the root system as well because you are increasing the surface area for the heat to, to damage it and also for trembling and other things. Now, yes, Sincrest was uh, grazed so low, but now look at the second uh, grass, Stipagrosis uniplumis. It was not grazed as low as the first one. So why? Because the animals Apart from selecting the species, when they come on a specific grass species, they select the parts as well. So they will prefer the soft, nutritious parts on the grass, which is mainly the top parts where there are seeds and so forth. So the cattle could not graze this grass as low as the other one because now it becomes, if you look at the stems or touch them, they are very hard and sticky also, which is also deterring them from uh, eating such a grass. And now again, we have this other grass standing tall like this one, not touch at all. So what does that tell you? So the animals have almost finished the blue buffalo. Their second best grass is uh, Stipagrosis uniplumis, which they could not even eat uh, uh, to the bottom. But now, if you continue like that, you will be left with this grass in your whole grazing area. And then what will the animals eat uh, from then? So when you underutilize the grazing area or the grasses, they may die. And if also if you overutilize, it will die. So you have to utilize your grazing materials optimally. Don't overgraze and also don't undergraze. That's it for now. Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content.